I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm so happy that, uh, that, that I'm able to speak here at the ARE, thanks to um, the support for, of, of uh, everyone here. So uh, I'm going to make sure that you have all the things that uh, will be helpful for this presentation. The first is a handout. You got the handout? Good. Uh, I gave you a, a little worksheet that you can use. There's a half sheet of paper there. And then this will be instrumental to your self-help process later on. It's a little cheat sheet that you can fold up and put in a wallet or stick it somewhere in a mirror that will be a good reminder for you. And then last, I have a door prize drawing. So. We'll wait till the very end on that one. Um, so welcome. I'm Dr. Susan Thompson. I'm a licensed professional counselor in Virginia. Um, and I really didn't, when I was get in my counseling training, anticipate being in this kind of position. I got trained pretty traditionally as a counselor, um, both my master's and my doctorate. So my doctorate is in counseling and counseling supervision. It doesn't get much more traditional than that. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about my background here in a few minutes because it's taken some twists and turns since I moved here to Virginia Beach in 98. So what we'll do today is I'll give you an, uh, a sense of what this thing called tapping is. Who's heard of EFT? Oh my goodness, I get to preach to the choir. This is great. How many of you have been practicing it? Fewer, so you've heard about it. Practicing is a next step. Well, this is, uh, we'll be doing some tapping just to give you a sense of what it is. And then what's happened over the years, I was introduced to it in about 19, no, 2001. And since then, my practice of it has evolved. I'll tell you more about that as we go to. And it's evolved to the degree that I've applied it to a karmic clearing protocol. Isn't that cool? I get to, to talk to you all who get that kind of thing. But I'll tell you, we'll talk a little bit about karma here in a little bit too. So this is going to be information and a little bit of practice and information and a little bit of practice. How does that sound to you all? Good? All right, so I'm not just going to be standing up here. I've been in private practice since about 2000, and in 2001, a friend of mine introduced me to EFT. She was a Reiki master, had um, gotten, um, this, this dates us, right? VHS recordings <laughs> of Gary Craig, who's the founder of EF EFT. Uh, and because I was still pretty new to private practice and building my practice, this is what I like to say. I had more time than I had clients. And so every day I pulled out a recording and I tapped along with Gary Craig and those VHS recordings. So I get to say that I've been a practitioner since 2001. I'm also a former faculty member at Old Dominion University. I worked for nine years as a full-time faculty member in the graduate counseling program where I got to create a class in complementary and alternative therapies. Um, so EFT was my gateway to <laughs> um, <laughs> energy work. Since then, I've become a Reiki master. I've gotten training in the c reconnection and reconnective healing. I've also gotten training in energy awareness through the Personal Transformation and Courage Institute. I've also gotten training in multidimensional healing and ask and receive, and the most recent is a couple of years ago in crystalline consciousness technique. And later on, you can ask me questions about any of those if you want. So that's happened over a decade or so. And in November 2015, I was asked by a friend who uh, by no small chance, is also a channeler herself. She channels folks' um, soul essence. She was struggling with something, and she said, could you help me with some tapping? And 
Anytime people ask me that, I say, of course, because I don't know what's gonna come up. And with her, we've tapped before on some different things. So we're tapping um, on a particular issue, and we both realize that it's a karmic pattern. And when I tap, um, I tap on whatever comes up uh, related to what somebody has said, and I found myself saying some words and phrases that hadn't come out of my mouth before. So usually I just let things rest, but I jotted notes on that particular tapping sequence that we did. And I thought, oh, okay, we're done with that. But about a month later, I looked at my notes and I thought, holy moly, <laughs> there's some really good stuff here. So that was actually the very beginning of this protocol. And it's developed since, so that's 2015. It's a few years since then. Um, and it's pretty amazing what's been happening with it. And by the way, when you're in a group, we get to harness the power of the group energy field. So look at you all here and also remotely. You'll get to harness the energy of all of us who are here now and listening in later. Isn't that cool? <laughs> All right, so this is a, an hour and a half presentation. There are gonna be some things that I'm gonna fly through and other things that I zero in on. You are absolutely welcome to ask questions. Um, I think Rosie has a mic, and we'll see if we can get a mic to you. But if not, then I'll just repeat the question. Is that okay? Good. Um, so this is my note number two. I've noticed that this can be a pretty powerful process that happens with folks. And I've noticed too that as more people have participated in this protocol, um, it gets more powerful. Um, so if you're sensitive to energy, how many of you know that you're sensitive to energy? Um, it may take a little bit to integrate it. I'll t I can talk about the process that I've noticed happening um, as people have started integrating later too. So this is what helps. Take it easy for the next 24 hours. You didn't realize that this is what you're coming into, at least <laughs> <laughs> this part of you, right? <laughs> there was another party that, knew, that you that knew. Um, so take it easy for the next 24 hours. Rest as much as you can. Drink plenty of water. I can't reinforce this enough, drink plenty of water. Notice areas of progress in spite of what might get stirred up. Okay, so make a mental note of that. I'll go back over all of these later on too. Call for a consult. In other words, if you have a friend that you can talk to about what's going on, then please do. And then you got this tool now that you'll be able to use that stuff comes up. You'll get to use EFT tapping even more. Um, and then there are lots of different resources out there that can help you with remembering and practicing EFT even more. So I'm going to talk about EFT, I'm going to talk about karma, I'm going to talk about the Akash and the innate. A lot of people have heard about the Akash because um, Edgar Cayce talked about it, um, and karma as well. And then the innate is something that's kind of new. And I'll tell you more about that here in a few minutes. So first I'm gonna set the foundation of EFT, and then we'll do the karmic clearing part. <laughs> um, so EFT itself is a combination of traditional Chinese medicine and kind of tr traditional psychotherapy. So it blends, this is what I love about it, east and west. Um, so the modern Western psychotherapy part is talking about something. Um, the traditional Chinese medicine part is applying pressure um, through tapping on different points on the meridians. So EFT itself um, has been shown to help with um, fears, phobias, anxiety, with depression and mood disorders, with, with food issues, um, as well as, this is my, <laughs> ETOH is alcohol. <laughs> Cravings, 
relationship problems, effects of stress. Uh, there's a new research study that's been published about it helping in just uh, five to 10 sessions with post-traumatic stress disorder. It's pretty great because when I first started as a counselor, PTSD was not curable. And now we've got a protocol, a process that really helps with clearing all the effects of PTSD, which I think is really good for our culture these days. It can improve um, work, academic performance, um, increase your health and level of well-being, creativity and intuitive abilities. This is what's personal for me, as I've noticed that my intuition has skyrocketed the more I use EFT as well, increased confidence and self-esteem. So, how many of you have heard of the meridians? Good. So, meridians themselves are energy pathways. This is a meridian doll. So you can see the lines on the doll that indicate the different pathways. There are a lot of numbers on her too that indicate points on the body. Um, so the foundational statement with traditional Chinese medicine and a lot of the energy approaches is the source of all dis-ease is a disruption of the body's energy system. So the disruption happens on the energetic level and then um, it kind of works its way through the different layers that consist of our being. Does that make sense? So there are 14 major meridians, seven pairs. Six of them are paired this way, and then there's a pair that runs front and back. So acupuncture is actually one of the oldest and most commonly used medical procedure in the world. And it capitalizes on the energy system and uses needles to stimulate the different energy points. We're not using needles. <laughs> We're just gonna use our fingertips. Um, acupuncture's been studied over decades. I think that the originators of acupuncture were scientists themselves, and I think they really did a lot of trial and error to really discover what points work for what reason. And I think it's also a lot older than we imagine it to be. Um, let's see here. So acupressure then is about stimulating by touching or holding different points. EFT, emotional freedom techniques, has an evolution itself. It started with Roger Callahan who developed what's called thought field therapy, TFT. Roger Callahan was a clinical psychologist who studied himself traditional Chinese medicine. And one day, he was with a client who had a severe phobia of water, by the way, and they'd been working for months, months on this phobia. And he had one of those flashes of insight You've had those too, right? Where he said, just tap right here and tell me again what happened. By the way, if you look, this is the, a point for anxiety. Phobia is an anxiety, right? He says, tell me the story and tap right here. And so that's what she did. At the end of the story, she says, it's gone. He says, what? It's gone? She says, yeah, I'm not afraid anymore. Um, I could even go swim. So he realized he was onto something. <laughs> and he put together a whole process and protocol that he trained a variety of clinicians in. Gary Craig actually was one of the folks that he trained. Gary Craig was a performance coach. He's since retired some time ago. And Gary Craig said, this is great. Roger Callahan had specific protocols for specific issues, just like what traditional Chinese medicine does. So for example, if you have allergies, and you have allergies, the source of your allergies is different. And traditional Chinese medicine would treat it differently. And that's what Roger Callahan created as well. For each person who had anxiety, the source of it was different. And so he 
muscle tested. I won't go into that. Uh, for which points were the appropriate points for you to, te to treat your anxiety? Does that make sense? Well, Gary Kratz says there's only nine points. You can tap all of them. It doesn't make any difference. So he collapsed what Roger Callahan had created and said, everybody needs to know this. And he started then training folks, holding big conferences for folks to learn EFT. And the torch has been carried by a great number of people. Um, and there's some good resources, I think, at the end of your handout that will show you where you can go for um, other, other folks who um, also use and teach EFT. So let's see here. Are you ready to try it? This is the action part. Good. What I want to do is just introduce you to the points first, and then we'll apply it to something else. But I'm going to take a step back, and I'm going to say, on your worksheet, what I'd like for you to do is to think of a situation that is distressing. Distressing, but not absolutely terrifying. Okay, so don't start with something really huge. <laughs> start with something that, if you rated it on a scale from 0 to 10, where 10 is the most intense that it could be, it comes in at around a 6 or 7, right? So a situation. Maybe it's a conflict that you've had with somebody. Maybe it's a, one of those irksome things that has happened recently. But just go ahead and write down a situation that has causes some kind of distress for you. And if you can't think of one, I'll give you plenty of mine. Okay? <laughs> just, kidding. just kidding. So just jot some notes about what the situ situation is. You don't have to use the whole worksheet. Just name the situation. Think about it. And then on a scale from 0 to 10, where again the 10 is the most intense it could be right now in this moment, not when it happened, but right now in this moment, moment as you're tuning into it, rate that intensity. There is a place on the worksheet for that. What we're doing right now is actually pulling something into your field on a conscious level because we're going to put it aside and we're going to do some, do some tapping and then we'll check in on it here in a few minutes, right? So I still see people writing. Just a couple of notes. Yeah. It's just weird. I feel this in my body. Just write the, the don't even worry about that. Just write, um, so all you're doing is writing a statement of what the issue is. Don't even worry about the rest of, the, of the, what's on the worksheet. Okay, That you can get into later. This is a calling something up right now. Everybody got something? Put it to the side for a second or a couple of minutes. You'll see how quickly this can work. And I'm going to introduce you to the points, and then I'll introduce you to the sequence. Okay, So the first point is called the karate chop. And that's on the outside. It's the fleshy part outside of your palm. So the, the here's the reason it's called a karate chop. Remember this? Right? So the outside of your palm. That's the first point. Yep. So some people will tap like this. Other people will tap like this, tapping the points together. And by the way, you don't have to tap. You can hold a point which comes in handy if you're in a meeting and you don't want to <laughs> show everybody that you're tapping. <laughs> right. All right, so that's the first point. That one will come in um, handy <laughs> a little bit later. 
with a, a setup statement, but we'll just leave it at that for right now, okay? The next point is called the eyebrow point, and that's the edge of the eyebrow on one side or the other of your nose, not in the center, but just the edge of your eyebrow. And again, you can tap or hold, either one's fine. As we go through the protocol, initially you're gonna uh, tap just about seven times at each point, but that just gives you an idea. All right, so following the bone around the side of the eye, this one is conveniently called side of the eye. <laughs> yes? You can do one side or the other, um, or both, All right? When I am working with somebody, usually what I'll say is, are you right or left-handed? So we'll just do one side, and I'll tap mirror image of what they're doing. But it doesn't matter which side, it's energy, right? The next one is under the eye, and guess what that one's called? <laughs> under the eye, yep. And it's right on the bone, again, just immediately under the eye, in the center. Yep, you got it. The next one is under the nose. And that's right in the center, but you can use two fingers if you want and tap on that. The next one is, guess what this one's called? It's actually called above the chin. <laughs> Just as you're getting used to. <laughs> there are people who will say it under the lip, so either one is fine. Again, in the center, because what we're doing is hitting the meridians that are, um, that are front and back, okay? The next one is called the collarbone. And um, I wear a scarf somewhat on purpose, but if you have a necklace on and it's hanging straight, chances are your necklace is actually right over um, where you want to tap on your collarbone. If you want refinement on that one, um, it is um, that hollow, that indentation just under your collarbone. And for those of you who might know the acupuncture points, it's K27. You can look that up later too. Right. So um, you can tap like this. What I frequently will do with folks is I'll say, make your hand, just um, you can pat and this, these fingers will hit one side and your thumb will hit the other. It's actually just below the collarbone, but if you're hitting the collarbone, it's the, the vibration, it's energy, right? So you're good. Either side is fine, right? One side or the other. What you'll n notice when I tap is I'll first tap on one side and then I'll tap on the other because I tap a lot during the day. And for me, it just feels like my body wants both sides and not just tapping on one side, okay? The next one is under the arm. And that one is about four inches below the armpit. This one you probably don't want to do in public very much. <laughs> this is what uh, clients will say. Like, I'm not sure I can do that one <laughs> when I'm in a meeting. You don't have to. Okay. <laughs> the last one is the top of the head. Right? That's right in the center. And um, if you're padding, you're fine. Right. Um, to refine the point even further, it is right as you go over the ear, and it is essentially where your soft spot was as a tiny one, right? So those are all the points. You wanna do it one more time, just so they have it. We'll start at the karate chop. Yep. And if you want, you can just take a deep breath and exhale. You probably do that a couple of times with the karate chop. And then we go to the eyebrow, and you can just take a deep breath at the eyebrow. So again, it's about seven times at each point. Side of the eye on that bone again. Yep, good. Under the eye, also on the bone. Take a deep breath. under the nose. I tap pretty quickly, but it doesn't matter if you tap slow or fast. All right. Next one is above the chin. Good. Next one is the collarbone.
next one under the arm. Then top of the head. It does. <laughs> um, there's a whole other set on your fingers that can be done under a table. Trust me, I've done it. <laughs> right? So those are the points. And then the last is you take a deep breath and then reassess. So go back to what you wrote down and notice anything that's happened with it, anything. We didn't specifically tap on that particular issue. We will here in a second. But how's everybody doing? Anybody stay the same? Roughly the same? That's all right. Sometimes what happens, there, there's a lot that could go into that. You might want to drink some water. Um, how many um, went up? Higher? Couple? And sometimes what happens is as you tune closer into an issue, you sh we shove a lot to the side. Have you noticed that? Yeah, we shove a lot to the side. When we, comes, when we bring it closer, then the intensity can grow. Um, and then how many went down? So um, a good chunk of you, the intensity went down. And that's what we're aiming for. So ideally, what we would do is tap until it's a zero. And that's where the worksheet that I gave you comes in handy. Because then you can start um, paying attention to not just the situation, but what are some of the thoughts that go along with it? What are some of the feelings that you've experienced related to the situation? And then body sensation. Like you asked about body sensation. So what's happening in your body? So for, um, how many of you have had the experience of carrying stress? <laughs> OK, so where do you carry stress? Where do you carry stress? A lot of people carry it in their shoulders. So I, um, if let, we're going to take stress. I'll show you how this all, all works together now. How does that sound? We'll just take stress and um, I'll tap on, we'll tap on that together, but we'll intend that whatever we're tapping on is related to the issue that you wrote down. How does that sound? Okay. So, ready for this? Okay. And again, I'm going to probably change sides just because that's what I do. Um, so, here's how all of this put, gets put together. And you can repeat after me now. Or just stay silent, that's fine. So even though I have this stress, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I have this stress, carry it in my shoulders. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. So third time, usually, we, the, so this is the setup. We say it three times. This is the third time. Even though I have this stress, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Okay, so eyebrow. We're just going to say this stress, side of the eye, this stress, under the eye, this stress, under the nose, this stress, above the chin, this stress, collarbone, this stress, under the arm, this stress, Good, top of the head, the stress. That's as simple as it gets, okay? Now we're gonna do one more round and I'll show you how you can also talk to yourself about this. All this stress. All this stress. Side of the eye, I'm carrying it in my shoulders. Under the eye, I wish I could just relax. Under the nose, I wish it would just go away. Above the chin, I feel it in my shoulders. Collarbone, all this stress. Under the arm, I hate all this stress. <laughs> Top of the head, all oh, this stress. Eyebrow, I wanted to go away. Side of the eye, I just want it to resolve itself. Under the eye, all oh, this stress. Under the nose, I'm carrying it in my shoulders. Above the chin, I'm ready to release it. Collarbone, I want to have some peace. Under the arm, all the stress. Top of the head, and I love and accept myself anyway. All right, stop and take a deep breath. 
Great. How's everybody doing? I see some giggling. <laughs> that's a, a sign that energy is shifting. By the way, there's another sign of energy shifting, and that's yawning, so I won't take it personally. <laughs> um, how's everybody doing now? All right, so go back to the original issue that you wrote down um, and rate it again, 0 to 10. Where is it now? So with the original form of EFT, what we just did is how it works. You just keep going down, you keep focusing on the issue that you wrote down to start out with. The worksheet has different places that you could include in tapping. So you saw how I sort of, if I were reading off my own worksheet, I'd say, I w oh, all those things that are on there, I'm thinking, I hate this stress. I can't stand that I have it. I wish it would just go away. So those are the thoughts that I might have about stress. And I just incorporated those into tapping. You could keep it really simple like we did the first round by just saying the stress. In fact, that's what Gary Craig um, taught. You just reduce it to a statement, the stress, um, and keep tapping. So, questions or comments? Yes. Yeah, um, all I could remember from the routine was stress. You know, it's like saying to somebody, don't slam the door. What do you remember? Don't slam the door. You know, all I can remember is the negative right. setup on, on it. And so if I were doing it, I think, I, I don't, unless there's a good reason otherwise. There's a lot of good reasons. Okay, so that's actually one of the major criticisms that people have. Well, why are you only, only focusing on the negative? You're only focusing on the negative. You're so negative. <laughs> um, and here's how I respond. Remember how I said we tend to shove it to the side? We can't just put a carpet over the stuff that has built up. It is still there. Um, how many of you listen to Abraham Hicks? All right, so Abraham Hicks says, you can't get there from here. So in other words, if I'm stressed and I wanna feel happy, I can't just act happy because the stress is still there. So we have to start with where I am. That's the reason that we go to the negative. If that's where I am, that's where I start. What you'll find, how many of you started fi finding that some of your thinking and feelings started shifting as you were tapping? Raise your hand. Good, most of you. That's the organic process. Right? Because we're acknowledging what is, then it's the energy that starts to shift our thoughts and our feelings. I got trained in what's called cognitive behavioral therapy. And how many of you have heard of that? <laughs> there is a practice of changing your thoughts with cognitive behavioral therapy. So change your thoughts, you change your reality. And I do believe that's true. And again, we can't just practice ourselves into um, positive thinking. Because what some of the research says is that after, while cognitive behavioral therapy is very effective, people actually regress because they go back to their original thinking. People don't do that with EFT. It changes their being, their energetic being. And so the thoughts are different. The feelings are different. The body sensations are different. We're working at that level, which is the level that Edgar Casey talked about as well, and not just at the body level. So, does that answer your question about why, why, why do you start with the negative? What will happen, and, you, and I was demonstrating, what will happen is you'll start naturally saying, oh, I'm ready for some peace. I'm ready to just let this go. Or I want to let it go. So you can start to say, I want to. I'm ready to. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Right? So just be where you are to start out with, and then notice, notice how your thoughts change, how your feelings change, how your body sensations change, and then start there. 
tap some more, notice how it changes, start there again. Does that make sense? That's how I've been using EFT. It's not how I was taught to, US, uh, to use EFT, however. I am a level, level, level one practitioner. I'm not a trainer. I should have said that right at the very beginning. I'm not a trainer. I am a practitioner as opposed to a trainer. I love EFT so much that I love talking about it to just about anybody who'll listen. And by the way, that's how you get better at something is that you just keep practicing it. Okay, so now we're gonna take EFT and we're gonna drop it into what happened for me with my friend in November of 2015. Um, this protocol has been expanded since then, but I've, and I've gotten a lot more insights about what it is and where it's coming from and that sort of thing. Um, so we're gonna talk about karma, <laughs> perspectives from Edgar Cayce, as well as cryon. I mentioned um, Abraham Hicks a little bit ago. How many of you are familiar with cryon? That's um, channeled by Lee Carroll, um, and he travels all over. I, um, I'm, I have an affinity for, for cryon too. Um, I moved here in 98 and started coming to the ARE to different uh, study groups and that sort of thing. So um, while I know a little bit about Casey, I know a little, little bit about Cryon, I know a little bit about um, Abraham Hicks, I know a little bit about, so we're just gonna talk a little bit about <laughs> what karma is from different perspectives. So you've heard what comes around goes around, that's karma. So it's Sanskrit for work, deed, or act. Um, it's our soul's energetic history. It's about cause and effect. It's our soul's energetic history. It's a pool of information that the subconscious mind draws on and can use in the present. So um, often we see karma as negative, but um, there are also positive elements of karma. It's the soul's memory. Oops, now it won't go anywhere. There we go. So Edgar Cayce said, with our free will, we can turn the challenges life presents um, to us into stepping stones toward growth, or we can see them as obstacles and stumbling blocks. Either way, we reap what we have sown. That's cause and effect. We constantly meet the consequences of previous deeds and attitudes. There really isn't karma between people. Instead, there's only karma with one's own self. The conceptual challenge is that we seem to most effectively come to terms with our own karmic memory, or we meet ourselves through our interactions with other people. Does that make sense? I really like this quote as a karma, uh, as a explanation of karma. Some, I have a friend just a couple weekends ago said, ah, what is karma anyway? Um, and so I talked to her a little bit about this. So Cryon says, karma is not punishment for past deeds. It's not punishment. Often people are, use it as it's punishment. It's not punishment. It's much more like unfinished business. It's not punishment for um, p past deeds. I love the dear one. This is, karma, uh, this is crying coming out. It's an attribute of judgment, judgment which is not of God. Karma is seeing past experience and having an emotional response so that you'll either do it again <laughs> or stay away from it. It's a driver of remembrance of things, both positive and negative. Karma is powerful, and most humans feel it, but have no idea they're receiving a specific driver from the DNA's Akash. This is really rich with information in it. Do you see how he's linked DNA and Akash? So there's actually some pretty recent research that says that our DNA and what drives our DNA is our, is our energetic field. So this is then our energetic field that holds the information. 
So Akash now, what's the Akash? This is also a little bit from different sources. The Akash is the, our planet's energetic history. We hold a piece of it. It's a giant library of nonlinear collective consciousness. Every thought that's ever been and ever will be for every soul. That's a lot of energy there. It's also called the Book of Life. It's also called the Akashic Records. So Edgar Cayce would say I, I, that he would consult the Akashic re Records. It's also called the Akasha. So the bo Book of Life can be found in lots of different places, including Old and New Testaments. Um, it's traceable at least as far back as the um, Semitic people and includes the Arabs, the Assyrians, the Phoenicians, Babylonians, Hebrews, lots of different cultures hold this information. Um, and among all of these people were the belief that there was um, in existence some kind of celestial tablets. So this is Edgar Cayce would consult the book. So there's this idea that it exists in some kind of tablet, but energy is energy, right? that contain the history of humankind as well as um, all manner of spiritual information. Traditional religion suggested that the book, either in literal or symbolic form, contains the names of all of those who are worthy of salvation. That's a little scary to me. <laughs> the book is to be open in connection with divine judgment. And in the New Testament, um, those redeemed by Christ are contained in the book. Um, those not found in the book of life will not enter the kingdom of heaven. That's from um, Edgar Cayce information there. Um, Cayce replied when he was asked about the source of his information that there were essentially two. The first was the subconscious mind, that's energy, of the individual, um, and also the Akashic records that he would consult. So he talked quite a bit about the Akashic records. Um, so I've already told you a little bit about that. And then um, Madame Blavatsky also talked about the Akashic records being much more than simply an account of static data, it's dynamic, which can be gleaned by a sensitive. Instead, the records are an ongoing creative stimulus. Um, Akasha, according to Blavatsky, is one of the cosmic principles and is a plastic matter, dynamic. Um, it's creative, immutable, um, and is the quintessence of all possible forms of energy. I think that's a great word, quintessence. Right? Multidimensional, is that right? Contains within itself the germs of universal creation which sprout forth under the impulse of the divine spirit. Lovely. Steiner also talked about the Akasha Chronicle, um, another history. So runs across lots of different resources. Kryon um, says it's a design, and it's designed to help you. It's intrinsic. Um, it's there at the beginning, and it came with you in your biology. <coughs> Um, it's a part of you that can never go away and can never be erased. You live with it every day. It's a part of the system you're born with, but it can be enhanced. This is what I appreciate about crime. Um, and I think this is what this uh, shift in energy for our planet brings, um, is that the Akash can be enhanced, understood, and changed to create your evolutionary, evolutionary process. So we get to... Um, understand that Akash here is not in your DNA, it's, over, um, it's in your DNA, it's overlapping multidimensional fields. Right, this is what I appreciate about um, Cryon. And it talks to you through emotions. So our, um, it's about energy and we register energy most through our emotions, most of us, not everybody. We all can access the Akash. So Edgar Cayce was one of a few at that time that was able to get there. But at this point in our human development, our conscious development, more and more of us are able to do that. 
as we raise our vibration, as we clear our junk, uh, we, can, we each have the ability to access it. So then the innate. Um, and I'm gonna, I'll go back. So as I was um, working on tapping with my friend, what I understood is that we, um, as we clear this negative karma, because it's the positive stuff we want to hang on to, right? Because it helps to drive, but at the same time, it really helps us to be neutral. So as we clear the stuff that's getting in our way, then um, it's going to be important for us to understand um, where we're heading to. Like, where do you want to head to? If you want to clear this, let's say, I want to clear the conflict that I have with particular people. Anybody have conflict with people? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a human experience. Huh? Um, then what do I want to replace conflict with? Do you have an idea of what to replace conflict with? Um, cooperation. Co cooperation, collaboration, peace, love. Right. Um, and the innate, then, is helping to broaden what we have lived with for so long. It's the smart body, and it can be programmed by choice. So Cryon has also said that we can consciously ask to be released from karma. That's where we are now in our human development. A conscious release of karma. How do you consciously re release something? <laughs> it's pretty simple. Ask. Right. And then allow a reprogramming, essentially. I like the metaphor that our bodies and our systems are a lot like a supercomputer. So we need to create a code for what's next. And the innate helps to do that. Cryon says with the innate, it's a field around your DNA that interacts with your consciousness through something that they've called the smart body or, or innate. Um, the Merkaba is also a word that can be used for the innate. It's one of the only systems in the body that's not centralized, too and the DNA work together as one system throughout the field. Um, and so the innate is the system that integrates all of the different systems. And it's recalibrating and evolving at this point. It waits for direction and a conscious shift. Um, so this is what free choice is about. It's our free choice that's needed to program what our next step is. Um, pure intent, pure intent. So this is the reason that we have to clear the negative because the negative stuff that we carry is like sludge in our energy field. And as we clear the sludge, then our intent becomes more and more pure. Does that make sense to you? So these are my guesses. I have no science. I might have a little bit to back some of this up. <laughs> but I really think that what happens with EFT, this has been my experience. What EFT or tapping does is to clear a channel. Um, I don't see energy. I have a feeling or a sense of it. Um, but what I have the sense of is that what happens, and as I've been practicing using EFT more and more, that channel's becoming broader and broader. So at first it was more like this, and now this channel that I'm operating in is more like this, and sometimes it's even further out. Does that make sense to you? It, to me it makes sense. Um, so it's, it increases our ability to access our multidimensionality because it's clearing the stuff that's getting in our way of being um, pure. I think that EFT operates on the quantum level, <laughs> which is multidimensional too. 
I think that because it operates at that level, it helps to direct our DNA, which we said before is also at an energetic level, and therefore it accesses our operating system, our operating system. Right? So that's what I've gotten at this point. Um, again, I'm not sure I can back all of it up, but I can probably sh point you to some different research studies that say that, um, that there's some evidence that the DNA is directed by energy. Take a look at Dawson Church's book, The Genie in Your Genes. It's a great book, right? So how many of you realize that we've been shifting <laughs> energetically? Really, this is about um, 2012 being a portal or a, a pivot point. We are moving from karmic energetic pa patterns into um, clearing the Akash and much more broad into the innate. Um, so we have the ability to program. And by the way, everything is recalibrating. So I've gone over a lot of information in a short period of time. That's what I was intending to do because I wanted to give us a chance to do um, more tapping, but questions or even comments at this point. Yes. There's a lot of shifting going on. <laughs> Can you go into that? That's really interesting. Um, I, so it's a shift in consciousness. It's a shift from, hmm, here's what I, all right, this is my understanding, okay? So my understanding is that um, we have been operating much more on an unconscious level, um, and that that portal, that opening, that 2012 has helped us to shift much more into a conscious level, levels. And as we shift more into being much more conscious at every level, multidimensional level, um, then um, we have the ability to understand how really interconnected we are. Um, and we have the ability to connect to information that's just, that's well beyond, well beyond the information that we've had up to this point. So we've been a little bit limited by the um, by karma and by the Akash to the information that's been on this planet. And part of what the innate is doing, because it's multidimensional, is o opening us up to information that is interplanetary, um, interdimensional. Do you know why? I'm going to give you my guess. So I'm <laughs> here's my guess. My guess is that we hit. Um, oh, here's what happens when I get this information, right? So <clears throat> my guess is that um, we hit a tipping point of people who were ready and willing and able um, to do what we're here to do and hold a level of consciousness and love <sighs> to move us to the next, oh boy, level of um, development. So, Ooh. Thanks for asking that question. <laughs> oh my. Ooh. Okay, well that ha that's what happens for me when I do the tapping. So I just want to let you know that. That's my, um, thank you for asking that. I appreciate it. So, other questions or comments? <laughs> well, yeah. Oh my gosh, um, it has really helped me to um, connect. The, I mean, I've been creative. I, I was born to be creative, I think. So for me, it's just cleared time, space. Um, I get much more things, information drops in. I'm linking creativity and intuition all together. So I start working on something and ideas from other areas really drop in really easily. So. I'm not interfering with that dropping in. 
Does that make sense? Okay. Right. Other questions? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So how I practice about trauma is uh, I'm a Buddhist, you know, practicing from Buddhism with the mm. MCI. So we always talk about trauma. But yes. It's not all negative. It's not all, it's positive. Not all negative or positive. It's, it's, it's our history. It's our energetic history and our future. Right. Yes. So we want to know what our future is going to be like. Look at what's happening now if we want to look at our future to look and like. And the only time I've done this mapping thing, a friend yes. of mine who's practicing social work in the D.C. area, yes. she helped me uh, because I was struggling with tons of anger about this horrible situation. And we're not supposed to be angry, right? Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> Especially if you're a practicing Buddhist. <laughs> Definitely. And so I thought, oh man, and, and I was really struggling to deal with so much of it because I had stupidly allowed someone to move into my home. And it was a neighbor's son, and I thought, oh, he'll be moved there just for a little while. But it turned out he was a very ill person from New York. And so, <laughs> and it wasn't very easy to get him out of my house. I really involved in those things. But about five months to formally evict someone. Anyway. Yes. And I thought, yeah, I am. <laughs> right, this is what I have. People are like, yeah, and this too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you feel, uh, oh, I don't want to say that, but yeah, that was, you know, expressing, you know, getting it on the table, that was very useful. Now, the interesting part, I go through zero balancing, which is similar to acupressure. Mm -hmm. I go Right. I was like, you know, it's time for a nap or something. That's how it kind of makes me feel very relaxed. So your experience was I having. Together, <laughs> <laughs> Can I, do you mind if I summarize? Okay. <laughs> so this is what I do in counseling session, right? <laughs> um, what she described was a situation that was pretty challenging. Um, and more than once, and for a long period of time, five months, you said, at least, to get the, uh, somebody that was getting him out. So, so lots, of, lots of situations leading up to um, needing to evict somebody from the home, lots of anger, lots of other thoughts and feelings, I would imagine, too. And then being introduced to tapping um, and feeling so much better, feeling at peace. Going then to another practitioner who does... Uh, Z point? Zero, balance. Zero balancing. And Smith is an MD okay. Okay. And so that practitioner not finding any energy left related to that particular situation, having tapped on it. I like that sort of getting it getting collaborative um, information and collaborative oh, well yeah, it's gone. Validation. <laughs> Validation, yeah. So thank you for that. So I know one of my experiences, um, I listened to uh, the Tapping World Summit, and I know the tapping solution is in your resources, but I have to tell you they have some great freebies, really good information. The Tapping Solution is a book. Um, I think they have, there's a couple of copies in the bookstore. There's a copy of it right there. <laughs> That's great. But there are videos also on the tapping solution that will walk you through what we've done here too. Um, they have a Tapping World Summit each year for the last five or seven years, I think. And I get the CDs so that when I'm going on a trip, I tap along. One of those, <laughs> this is a funny story, I'll tell you. So I was a faculty member at ODU it was winter break. I have a sister who lives down in Atlanta. I drove down to Atlanta. 
and I'm listening to um, these recordings as I'm going down. Come back, first day of class, I have a student. This is a doctoral level class. I have a student who said, Dr. Thompson, were you in Atlanta during the holidays? And I said, why, yes, I was. She says, we saw you. All right, you have to un kind of unpack that, right? <laughs> we saw you. In other words, not just my student. Now, fortunately, she'd been, I, I'd introduced tapping to previous classes, so she had an idea of what it was. She says, yeah, I was in the car with my parents. <laughs> and we saw you tapping. Because, while well, I was driving, yes. Because it was the tail end of a 10-hour trip. And um, she says, my dad asked, what is she doing? <laughs> And she was able to explain what it was. He was the kind of person he was interested, and I'm sure he looked some more information up. All right, so fast forward to, um, or actually around that time that my friend Sandy and I got together and we tapped on her stuff and I wrote some things down. I was going to visit some other friends and I was tapping. Um, and uh, I tapped on something that I hit rage. So didn't feel it at that point, but it opened it up. Um, and I wish I could have coached myself further in that, but I did actually end up set committing to a 30-day tapping challenge for myself. So um, I used that as an opportunity to tap on stuff. So every day for 30 days, um, I and a friend at 6.15 in the morning <laughs> were on the phone and we were both tapping on whatever was coming up for us during the day. We actually turned 30 days into a year and a half. So, um, and by the way, here was the very first day. You can tap along with me if you want. Here was the first day. Even though I said I was going to tap on the outside, so remember on the outside, even though I said I was going to tap, I don't want to. <laughs> Even though I agreed I was going to tap, I just don't want to. <laughs> so that's called resistance. <laughs> and that's the first step, usually. I love and accept myself anyway. Even though I agreed to tap every day for 30 days, it's going to be a long 30 days. <laughs> I love and accept myself anyway. I agree to tap. Yeah, side of the eye. But I don't want to. Under the eye, I just don't want to do this. Under the nose, I'm doing it anyway. Above the chin, I'm so glad Diane's doing it with me. Because <laughs> I don't want to. Under the arm, I wouldn't do it myself. Top of the head, thank goodness I have help. Um, eyebrow, I just don't want to do this. Uh, side of the eye, so I'm going to allow myself to feel that way. Under the eye. And feel the resistance. Under the nose. I just don't want to. Above the chin, but I'm doing it anyway. Collarbone, and I love and accept myself anyway. Under the arm, this resistance isn't all of who I am. Top of the head, maybe I could allow myself to tap anyway. Stop and take a deep breath. All right. So that's how the first three days went. <laughs> right? There is something about when you're starting something new that really... Um, brings up all of the sludge. So I had to clear the sludge first. Does that make sense? So maybe our tapping on that will help you and you don't have to go through as much resistance. <laughs> yes? The way you were playing with moving the sludge um, kind of hit me because uh, I remember this old lady that I was talking about that she laid in this stage of where this old army buddy and they were having some farming issues and he kept saying, you're just going through an adjustment period. You know, and it was like, this is what we're doing. 
Yes. So, right, and what you're also saying is going through an adjustment period. We have those phrases, and they're comforting, too. It's like, so I'm allowed to have this adjustment period. It must be normal. So I'll start saying things like that, too, because it is normal. Um, and the more we resist, what is the phrase? The, what we resist persists. Um, so I'm not going to resist it. There it is. Up, oh, yep, here I am feeling this way. I'm allowing myself to feel this way. You probably started noticing what was happening to my voice, too. Did you notice? My voice just started getting calmer as well. That's the tapping. It does this organically. Is there somebody else, too? Yes. EFT has been very helpful for relieving physical pain. Now, because I'm not a medical doctor, um, what I do with folks is work on the emotional and psychological aspects of the pain. Because there is research now that says, um, <laughs> yay, <laughs> there is research that says that up to uh, around 80 to 85% of our physical pain has emotional and psychological aspects to it. Uh, there may be a mechanical issue that we're not going to take, we're not going to actually deal with with um, EFT, but we will um, help the psychological and the emotional aspects. And if you can reduce pain 80 to 85%, that's a pretty big deal. Make sense? Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I think the Ken unit is that the people do with the tapping. That is the tapping sensation, which I'm working incredibly on this. Oh, so right. There is such a thing, and if you have a Ken unit, you get it at a. Right. So a Ken's unit is uh, um, has an electrical stimulation. It's used with um, helping wounds to heal and other other um, and surgeries and things like that. So then oh. that's available over the counter as well. No. Um, so the question is, is it just those points? Are there other points? Because acupuncture points are all over the body. And by the way, the acupuncture points are related to organs in the body. So if you have a physical pain here, that's not necessarily related to one of the meridians. So can, I mean, tapping here, there is potentially a meridian point there. The technique is tapping on these points. It's keeping it really, really, really simple. Okay really simple. So you can, uh, you can complicate things more. This simple technique works. Now, that said, there are lots of people who have expanded the points or reduced the points. So in other words, um, we've got three meridians that run on this side of our arm and three on this side. That's six out of seven meridians <laughs> just on our arms. So there are people who will hold a wrist and you're stimulating meridians. Now, it's energy. Energy is energy, which is if I stimulate here, so this is different than our, our modern medicine that says, you know, our pain comes from here. Like if my, I have a pain in my wrist, it comes from my wrist. Do you understand what this says? The source of all disease is the disruption of the body's energy system. So we're treating the energy system, which then treats physical, physical, <laughs> emotional, and, and, um, and thought forms. Does that make sense? Okay. So you'll find people who will hold the wrist, who tap on points down here, who tap on points, because those are points too. They've adapted EFT to something else, and that's fine. That's fine. There is, um, there is someone who does a lot of work with money issues, She's left out this point because it's an awkward point. 
because she works with a lot of people who are business. They'll get the other ones. That's fine. You're stimulating most of the points once you have shifted, you're shifting the energy system. Yes. So your sense is that what it's doing is it's preparing. It's, it's, preparing. it's, really, it's really an early phase before yeah. the, the rest of that work happens with that. I, I would agree to some, di some, to some point. And what I also know is that there are people, and uh, OK, so yes and. I'll do a yes and. The yes and is there are people who are skeptics, mm. and it still works. Yeah. So it's about energy. Active experience. It may be active experience. It might be. So we're still trying to figure out what it is. What are the operate uh, th right? So we can make some great guesses right now, um, and that's why there's still science that is um, starting to back all of this up. So that's the good news. There is science that's starting to back it all up. Thank you. <laughs> So are you ready for a special application of tapping? Um, so I've talked about karma. All right. Here's where your handout should actually have um, a recent version of the protocol. This is what got started when I was tapping with my friend. Um, and it has evolved. It's one page, and I apologize that it's probably like nine-point font because I wanted to fit it all on one, one page. I think that one of the most powerful spiritual phrases is, I ask. We know that it's our intentions that shift our energy and our perspective. We can consciously make some shifts. Declarations are a firm, <laughs> um, pure, expression of intention. And almost all new thought presenters talk about the power of manifesting, of declaring and intending, focusing on what we do want as opposed to what we don't want. The problem is that so many of us have difficulty breaking free from the old patterns. Do you hear Carmen this too? Okay. So you've gathered up to this point, we are multidimensional beings. I appreciate that that's what Edgar Casey brought to us. People function all, all at the same time, simultaneously, on lots of these, on all these levels, and they're interconnected. We are interconnected. And healing integrates all these levels. And I think that that EFT has the greatest access to healing. I've been influenced by Ask, ask and Receive, um, that has some statements in it that include our highest states of consciousness always have the answers. There's a part of my being is a phrase that comes from ask and receive. And we don't always consciously have access to the information, um, but it uses the power of the word. Um, crystalline consciousness technique I was trained um, a couple years ago in always starts with I ask. I ask to place the vibration of opening in uh, my crystalline consciousness field. So all the statements start with I ask. Um, <laughs> so this is, was, um, really captures what I was saying before. This time in human development corresponds with our energetic shift. Also from electromagnetic beings to crystalline beings. This is, um, this is like are moving from a power cord, an electrical power cord, to fiber optics. Isn't that cool? Right? So if you don't know about electrical cords, the farther the distance, the thicker the cord has to be. 
because there is something that's called resistance. It's a, also an electrical term. Fiber optics, that's not true. It's pure energy, um, and, um, and we, we have more access to it. So this is part of that shift, too. So the place of magic is when this resistance has been cleared, and we're restored to our pristine energetic state, where anything and everything is possible. So three steps to this protocol. Identify the energies, feelings, or events that you want to be cleared. So you might want to write another on the worksheet, a pattern that you notice for yourself that's over and over again. A pattern with a person, a pattern with a situ kind of situation, um, uh, or events that you keep running into. That's the first step. Then we're going to clear the pattern, and then we're going to activate the Akash, or install. Um, so this is where I think what happens is as, as we clear, as we clear, we create a vacuum. <laughs> and on the physical le physics level, like um, energy abhors a vacuum. We've got to put something in it right then. We might as well put what we want into it. Does that make sense? So. Write down a pattern. And I'm going to write down one, because it's pretty powerful when this happens in a group. And the next step is to decide now what you want in place of that. So for example, I've had two jobs over the years where I've gotten into a huge conflict with my boss and I quit. I don't want to keep repeating that pattern. So I, it's, we talked about this before, so what I'm putting in that space um, I'm declaring that I'm going to put in that space a collaboration and loving relationships. Does that make sense? So I have the first one that we're going to clear and the second one we're going to manifest. We're going to do a lot of tapping now, okay? So we've done that, laying the foundations. Um, if you want to assess the intensity, you're welcome to. I rarely do these days. I just know um, what it feels like at the end. So, for example, you might start with, I get stuck in the past and judge everything that's happening now by what happened then. And where you could want to move to might be, I stand firmly in the now, aligning myself with source energy. I'm worried about money. How many people worry about money? I think everybody's worried about money. And not having enough. So you can manifest feeling the flow of infinite abundance in every area of my life. Self-judgment, self-criticism can become I grow and expand self-love and self-acceptance. Do you see how that can work? Right. All right, so we did that. There we go. We already got those. Um, okay. <laughs> I can't tap and advance slides at the same time, so it's all on this next slide. <laughs> um, and there might be some, it's actually, I have it in front of me as well, so there might be some verbiage changes from the version that you have, but it's all good. So is everybody ready? Okay, so I'm going to make the statement, um, um, there's a blank in the protocol. Do you see, even though I have this karmic energetic pattern related to blank, I'm going to say, we're going to say as stated, okay? So that you can, you, that's your, you're owning your piece, what you stated. That's the importance of writing it down ahead of time. All right, so we say that setup statement, the first two bullet points, three times, two times, two times, and then we'll tap through the rest of it. 
So I'm going to break it down for you, with you, um, into small phrases as much as I can. Sometimes they're, they're going to get big because because um, I can't help myself sometimes. <laughs> All right, are you ready? At the karate chop. Even though I have this karmic, here's where some extra stuff is in here. Subatomic. Multidimensional energetic pattern. As stated. I ask and choose. And tend and allow. Myself to be released from it now and forever. In all its forms. The people, feelings, and body sensations. Roots and points of origin. Unhealed emotional wounds, strings and strands, conscious and unconscious, seen and unseen forces that have connected me and all those participating to these energies and entities. Okay, we're going to say that all again. Um, even though I have this karmic and subatomic, Multidimensional energetic pattern. As stated, I ask and choose, and tend and allow myself to be released from it now and forever in all its forms. The people, feelings, and body sensations, roots, and points of origin. Unhealed emotional, wounds, unhealed emotional wounds, strings and strands, strings and strands conscious, and unconscious, conscious and unconscious, seen and unseen forces, seen and unseen forces that have connected me, have connected me and, all and all those participating to the energies and en entities. The energies and entities. Okay, eyebrow. I ask and intend, I ask and intend side of the eye, allow and accept, under the eye, this program to dissolve and release. Under the nose, the karmic and subatomic. Above the chin, multidimensional. Collarbone, energetic pattern. Under the arm, in all its forms. Top of the head to be opened and downloaded. Um, eyebrow installed and received. Side of the eye, grounded and integrated. Under the eye, into every aspect and dimension. Under the nose of my being now. Yeah. Above the chin. So I'll just, uh, just keep tapping. I'm going to say some things fast because what's happening with this is starting to collapse. Past, present, and future. Collarbone, mental and emotional. Under the arm, physical and spiritual. Top of the head, cell and DNA. Uh, eyebrow, subatomic and electromagnetic. Side of the eye, soul and innate. Under the eye, multidimensional and eternal. Under the nose, blueprint and crystalline. Above the chin, I declare. There you go. <laughs> Colorvin, that the program lessons. Under the arm, and automatic upgrades. Top of the head are installed and received. Um, eyebrow grounded and integrated. integrated. Side of the eye in all its forms. In all its forms. In, under the eye into every aspect and dimension. Aspect under the nose of my being. Of my being. Above the chin with grace, with grace and ease. Collarbone restoring the energies. Restoring under the arm and systems. and systems. Top of the head to their pristine state now. Um, eyebrow installation is complete. Side of the eye grounded and integrated. Under the eye in all its forms. Under the nose into every aspect and dimension. Above the chin of my being. Collarbone with grace and ease. Under the arm and mastery. Stop and take a deep breath. Okay. So, so.
sec the next part of the protocol. You can assess if you want. We're not going to right now. We're going to do the, um, I have a couple of defaults in the, <laughs> now we're getting into programming terms, right? There are a couple of defaults. Um, if you aren't sure about what you want to install, you can install Compassion because um, it's a catalyst to enlightenment in my mind. Um, you have a choice to also activate the innate youth rejuvenation and rejuven regeneration template. How many want to do that? Okay. <laughs> like there's an innate youth regeneration and <laughs> rejuvenation template that we can access at this point. So if you want to access it, you can declare it too. It's in the, it's in the protocol. Okay. Again, small text ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're skipping the karate chop because this is the karate, the, that's the place of reversals, and we're just going to start with um, the next phase. So, really call to mind what it is that you want to install. And I'm going to say, as stated, um, you're going to say it too, um, and you're pulling in what it is that you want to in your field. You got it? Okay, at the eyebrow. I ask and intend. Of the eye and allow. and allow. Under the eye, this akash and innate. This akash and innate. Under the nose, crystalline energy, energetic pattern. Above the chin, lessons and program. Lessons and program. Collarbone in all, its form. in all its form. Under the arm, as stated. As stated. Um, top of the head to be unlocked, opened, and downloaded. Unlocked, opened, and downloaded. Eyebrow installed and received. Side of the eye grounded and integrated. Grounded and integrated. Under the eye into every aspect and dimension of my being. Under the nose, past, present, and future. Past, present, future. Above the chin, mental and, mental and emotional. Collarbone, physical and spiritual. Physical and spiritual. Under the arm, cell and DNA. Cell and DNA. Top of the head, subatomic and electromagnetic. Subatomic and electromagnetic. Um, eyebrow, soul and innate. Side of the eye, multidimensional and eternal. Multi Under the eye, blueprint and crystalline. Blueprint and crystalline. Under the nose, programs for sustained high coherence. Programs for sustained high coherence. Above the chin, sweet flowing love. Sweet flowing love. Collarbone, vital, joyful aliveness. Vital, joyful aliveness. Under the arm, balanced health. Balanced health. Top of the head, pristine well-being. Uh, eyebrow, multi-dimensional support. Multi -dimensional support. Side of the eye and creativity and wisdom. Creativity. Under the eye are also unlocked, downloaded, and received. Also unlocked, Under the nose with grace, ease, and mastery. With grace, ease, and mastery. Above the chin, advancing and newly calibrating consciousness. Advancing and newly calibrating consciousness. Collarbone at every level. Under the arm, with elegance and delight. With elegance and delight. Top of the head, and this is what you choose. I ask to now activate. Ask to now activate. Um, eyebrow, the innate youth. The innate youth. Side of the eye, rejuvenation. rejuvenation. Under the eye, and regeneration template. And regeneration template. Under the nose, and every layer of my DNA. Every layer of my DNA. Above the chin, and while we're at it, in every molecule of water. <laughs> Any and all upgrades. Any and all upgrades. Under the arm are automatically, received and installed. are automatically received and installed. Top of the head running continuously. Running continuously. Um, eyebrow grounded and, integrated. grounded and integrated. Side of the eye in all its forms. In all its forms. Under the eye into every aspect and dimension of my being. Into every aspect and dimension of my being. Under the nose, I declare. Above the chin, that installation and integration are complete. The installation and integration are complete. Collarbone in all its forms. In all its forms. Under the arm, grounded in every aspect and dimension. Grounded in every aspect and dimension. Top of the head of my being. Of my being. Um, eyebrow at the karmic and akash. At the karmic and akash. Side of the eye, innate and crystalline. Innate and crystalline. Under the eye, with grace, ease, and mastery. Under the nose, and I see confirmation. And I see confirmation. Above the chin, throughout my day today. Throughout my day today. Collarbone, and in the coming days. And in the coming days. Under the arm, I easily, notice. I easily notice. Top of the head, 
Signs of this higher vibration. Eyebrow and lightness of being. Side of the eye of progress. Under the eye of magic. Under the nose, wonder and miracles. Stop and take a deep breath. And just check in with yourself. I'm seeing that my time is up, actually. We've got lots of resources, but as a reminder, take it easy, if you can, for the next 24 hours. Rest as much as you can. Drink lots of water. Flush the stuff out. Notice areas of progress in spite of what might get stirred up. So what often happens is the old energy wants to make its last stand. So just notice, use more EFT, call for a consult. <laughs> um, and let's see here. So let's, I have, oh, there are a couple of eva evaluations. Um, one that the, for the ARE, and then if you want to be entered into the, for the door prize, just write your name. Otherwise, if you'd like to be on my email list, you're welcome to put more information on there.